in the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. We are church, and to this church we have heard the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Sounds good. Strong words. Really sounds more like something we might hear during the season of Lent when we're encouraged to reflect on how we're living our lives and things we want to change, improve, that kind of stuff. But let me remind you of the setting of this. Jesus is there on the plain. This is his sermon on the plain, not on the mount. This, he's right there on the plain, on the level plain. And he has just chosen his 12 apostles. He's been talking about the Beatitudes, the blessings and the woes. He's, give, he's giving them more information, and who he's, the people he's talking to is this. He's talking to those disciples, those 12 who have been chosen and to be sent out eventually and very soon, and also to his disciples, people who follow him, people who are following him, people who want to learn from him, and also to the people, people who maybe were just curious, what's going on with Jesus? So it's... It's sort of a pep talk, it's an information talk, it's getting them ready to go forth into the world to some degree and probably to face some conflict if they're going to talk about Jesus, probably to be challenged, maybe to be spat upon, maybe to be cursed, maybe be, to be hated, maybe to be loved. And so he's getting them ready to be sent out into the world. So those words come to us as well. So, reflect on this past week, the past seven days. Did you have an encounter with an enemy? Maybe an adversary. Somebody who considered you an enemy. Some sort of conflict it might have been around the kitchen table. It might have been on television. It might have been on the street. It might have been with friends at a dinner. It might, it might have been at church. Because it happens. And, and what did you do about that encounter? I mean... Did you feel hated? Did you feel cursed? Did you feel abused? Well, Jesus continues his instructions by saying to his apostles, disciples, and people, he con continues his instructions by saying, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So, I wonder if those words, if you had heard them when you were in that conflict, being a victim of something, I wonder if those words would have helped you. Maybe, maybe not. It was a tense, situ tense situation. And what we have to remember is that our God, the God that we worship, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the God of Israel, um, is the, God, is the God of mercy and grace. That's a big part of, of that God and that message of God to us in our daily lives, in our communal lives. Um, but it's also, it's also a God of judgment that holds us accountable for our actions. Not a God of cheap grace, not a God of surface forgiveness. So in that reflection of something that might have happened last week, we need to be remembers, remember, we need to remember as followers of Jesus that um, to forgive someone is not just to smooth over a curse or an act of hatred or an act of abuse. 
God is not talking about forgiving, loving, but do not do anything about criminal behavior. He's not talking about do good, but don't worry if it hurts a little bit. He's not talking about forgive, pray for an abuser, but don't do anything about it. I mean, that's not what's happening here. He's saying that somewhere in our hearts we have to, we have to see and feel what's really going on in our lives. And that which does not feel good, we need to be empowered by God to do something about it, to confront it, and to say no. At the same time, he's saying the message of Jesus Christ is one of mercy and grace, compassion, love, and forgiveness. And we need to do both. Well, I'm not making it any simpler here, am I? Because that's hard. That is hard to do. But that is the message from God. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Somehow, somehow we do, I'm going to say it again, need to hold in our hearts the current pain of an offense and the ultimate that oneness of all of God's creation. And the good thing about church, the good thing about our faith, the good thing about being companions in faith with other people is that we get support from other people for talking things out and learning how we might do that. That's, all called, that's what we call a faith journey, a spiritual journey. Every human being faces this challenge. And we as Christians are called to learn what Jesus tells us to do in order to respond to the challenge. Well, one of, one of the examples in the history of the church of somebody who acted in full awareness of, of something wrong and yet also expressed forgiveness so that people could move on to some sort of healed reconciliation was Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Um, he's the, uh, he, he was the Archbishop of Cape Town in South Africa. Um, as you probably well know, he was the leader of the people in South Africa who stood against apartheid, against violent segregation in that country. Um, in 1984, he was given the Nobel Peace Prize for his work, really around reconciliation and bringing healing and wholeness to that group of people. And his daughter, Umpo, um, went to Virginia Theological Seminary. Uh, she's an Episcopal priest. She's a, she doesn't live in DC, but she's a canonical resident of the Diocese of Washington. And they, put, they wrote a book called The Book of Forgiveness, The Book of Forgiving. I haven't read it, but I saw a couple of quotes from it. It's fascinating. Let me read you the words of Desmond, Tutu, Desmond and Umpo Tutu. The quality of life on our planet is nothing more than the sum total of our daily interactions with one another. Each time we help and each time we harm, we have a dramatic impact on our world. Because we are humans, some of our interactions will go wrong. And then we will hurt or be hurt or both. It is the nature of being human and it is unavoidable. Forgiveness is the way we set those interactions right. It is the way we mend tears in the social fabric. It is the way we stop our human community from unraveling. Those are holy words. Those are words totally consistent with the gospel according to Luke, with the message of Jesus, with the core of our faith. Of course, forgiveness pops up again and again in the way we worship in the Lord's Prayer. It pops up again and again with... Um, um, we're going to confess our sins uh, communally before we receive communion. 
It's, it's just one of the basic principles of our faith that in some way we need to face the truth of what we've done and for what we're sorry, what we've experienced and what we want to confront. How can we all become more reconciled in God and with each other? That's a primary movement and river running through our faith and through the people of this faith. And it's something that is so important in whatever time and period of history. But for us, we're living in this time. So it is very important for us. How will we confront evil and forgive and love? And I think the only answer for us is with God's help. Some people can do it without God's help. Good for them. I can't. It's just too hard to be doing on a daily basis. We need to turn to God again and again and simply say, help me, God, as I confront this pain, and help me, God, to find a way out. And you know what? It's not only about forgiving others. It's also about forgiving ourselves. So many of us lay burdens and sins on ourselves when we shouldn't. And God doesn't want us to do that either because each one of us is a holy creature created by God. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Live in this world and follow Jesus' way. And know that you are loved. You are loved from head to toe by the God who saves all of creation. Amen.